Hi everyone welcome to Movie B Recaps. This is Matt and Kate. They have been married for 13 years, but Matt's income from painting was far from enough to improve their living conditions, so the two then looked for new opportunities and decided to live in an old house located in Maryland. Oh, no, no, it's not the best to live in Yes, it's in a Mom. area. When they got there, they immediately cleaned up the room and threw away the obsolete things. Matt was surprised to find a secret room which key he had seen in the pile of discarded items. Together with Kate, they managed to explore. At first, they didn't find anything in the room. Only the next day when Matt returns with an electrician, they find an ancient wiring installation in a very strange arrangement. Even in his entire career the technician had never seen such a strange wiring installation like this. Can you do anything about it? I've never seen anything like it. The technician also wondered why Matt would want to occupy the house where the previous owner had been killed inside it. Out of curiosity, Matt secretly explored the truth of the technician's story. And Matt found a surprising fact he didn't want Kate to know about. The night was getting late, and Matt, who was drinking in the room, God, I need another bottle. was very surprised to find what he wanted materialized right there. Matt finally realized that the room was a magic room. Kate wakes up and finds Matt busy with expensive paintings cost millions of dollars. By Paul Cezanne. Are you high or something? More to her surprise, Matt even challenged Kate by saying that he was able to fulfill all his wife's wishes at that time. Okay. And miraculously, it was proven at that moment. This fake? Here. How did it get here? Kate was actually worried and had a bad feeling about the phenomenon, but Matt managed to persuade her just to enjoy it and have fun with it. This is fucking scary, Matt. Yes, it is, but I think we should enjoy it. I want money! I want the best champagne in the world. Tons of champagne. Matt, who is just a painter, and Kate, who only relying on wages as book translators, both of them can now forget all that things and dissolve in immeasurable luxury. Only in a few days their life changed drastically, day and night they spend in the magic room asking for everything they want. Starting from money, drinks, to sexual satisfaction they enjoy in a happy feast. That's my girl. <laughs> but days later, Kate realized that the material waste was meaningless without the presence of a child, and suddenly Matt found Katie in his room already with a tiny little baby. Matt had refused the baby presented in that way and forced Kate to return the baby to the magic room. But after seeing his wife so happy with the baby in the end he accepted and let Kate take care of the baby. As time goes by, Matt discovers information about the murder incident that occurred in the house decades ago. Matt learned that the culprit named John Doe was still alive in a mental hospital. And what Matt was most curious about was John Doe's confession that he commit murder because of that room. Out of curiosity, Matt met John Doe. John who now looks old is trying to avoid Matt's question and instead telling Matt to forget the room and leave the house before it's too late. John advised that the most dangerous thing for a person is, when he has got everything he wanted, is a person that gets whatever they want. On the way home Matt wants to pay for gas. But he finds all the money in his pocket has changed to dust. That's why upon reaching home Matt scattered all the money out of the house and brought the painting out the door. 
Then the fact is revealed, that they can't take all the items obtained from the magic room out of the house, or everything will turn to dust. Angrily, Matt tries to destroy the walls of the room to find out the mystery behind. But again, all he found was a strange arrangement of wires that difficult to understand. While that day, Kate wanted to take her miracle baby outside the house. Matt tries to stop it, but when Kate asking the reason, Matt didn't want to explain why the baby shouldn't be taken out of the house. Arriving in the yard the baby screamed, and a strange thing happened. In just seconds the baby turned into an eight-year-old boy. To her surprise, Matt finally told Kate that the room could provide everything including a child. As long as he is not taken out of the house the baby will still be safe but if he is taken out of the house then he will age quickly and then crumble to dust. With disappointment Kate follows the rules and tries to keep her child inside home forever. The child's name is Shane and for so long he had never set foot outside the house. For the same reason he can't answer the door. And even to prevent him from getting out, Matt and Kate blocked the windows with wooden planks. This even made Shane feel more isolated. One day when Matt came home from shooting practice, he found Shane playing in his studio and broke his snowball decoration. Matt who actually hasn't fully accepted Shane as the child becomes angry with he has done, in his annoyance at being scolded that night Shane stumbled across a map of the house that led him into the basement where the strange cable installation is located. On the other side Matt has suddenly surprised found a new snowball decoration that Shane had broken, understanding what was going on through the flashing lights, Matt took Kate after Shane to that room, and it turns out that Shane has turned the room into a garden, where he can freely play there without any fear. Did you do this? But Matt forbade Shane to do that. Kate tried to defend Shane by saying nothing wrong with it as long as no one was harmed, while they were arguing the phone rang, and it turned out to be from John Doe who secretly found out that the couple want a child. Kate, who had been eavesdropping on the conversation ever since, was very surprised hearing John Doe telling the situation. That Matt's only option at that time was to kill his own wife if he wanted Shane to live freely like other normal humans, or vice versa. And this kind of dilemma was also experienced by John Doe's family when his adoptive parents wanted him as an adopted son to be able to live freely. Instantly, Kate's worries peaked and she wanted to end her own life for Shane's sake. Meanwhile Matt, who couldn't control his emotions, told Shane that he was actually a child of nobody but only a shipment from the magic room. Until Matt realized he had hurt Shane's feelings he sincerely apologized for what he had said. On the other hand, Kate who returned home that night was quite moved to see Shane sleeping soundly beside Matt. Matt then woke up few moments later and approached Kate. And they made love that night, but without them knowing, Shane witnessed it. And a hidden plan appeared in his mind. Secretly he stole the key to the house door and when morning came Kate and Matt were surprised to find the house door open. When they searched for it both were very surprised. Shane has now turned into a young man and he pointed Matt's gun and saying that he hate Matt. Luckily Kate was able to calm him down for a moment, before Matt then suddenly attacked him which made Kate fell and passed out. When she comes back to her senses Kate asks where Shane is, and Matt explains that Shane had been shot dead while they were fighting. His corpse had been taken out of the house and had disappeared into dust, Kate was sad and Matt tried to comfort Kate by holding her, at the moment Kate is not aware that she is dealing with a fake Matt, Shane incarnation. She didn't know the real Matt just woke up from the fight and looked for Kate's current whereabout. Later on, while watching the way he took meal Kate just realized that the man she was dealing with was not her husband. But Shane. On the other hand, flickering lights signaled activity in the magic room, and this prompted the original Matt to go there by breaking wall and breaching wiring installation and Matt just realized that Shane had turned the room into a very large area and he had also duplicated their house and keep Kate there. And the reason Shane changed his physique to resemble Matt was because he was so obsessed by venting his sexual desires on Kate, 
and when the real Matt appeared at the house, Kate arrived at the moment where she couldn't tell which was the real Matt and which one is fake. Until when one of them called her Jombak, she finally knew that this one was her real husband. Jumbak. And when the fake Matt who was none other than Shane tried to drag her, Kate managed to push him down the stairs. They used the opportunity to escape but the room in the duplicate house made them confused to find the way out. Shane who has returned to his original body managed to find them both, and he is so happy that he succeeded stabbed Matt to death, but it turns out that the pair he faces is just an illusion that Matt and Kate made from the magic room, meanwhile, the real Matt and Kate have run back to their home. Shane keeps chasing them to the real house. But he didn't realize that Kate and Matt had set him up. He attacked Matt at the door and as a result he fell out of the house. Inevitably, in a short time his body turned old. <coughs> and finally Shane had to surrender to the laws of nature and let his body crumble to dust. <laughs> One month later, Kate and Matt decide to stay in a motel, and despite all the illusions in the house, Kate was shocked when she found out that she was pregnant. Wow. Could it be Shane's son?